Hello Washington Wizard families. My name is Amy Wilkinson and I'm the Magnet Coordinator here at Washington. I am excited about our electives for the 2019-20 school year. Elective registration forms are going home today, August the 28th. They are due back to homeroom teachers on Wednesday, September the 4th. Um, in addition to this screencast, I'll have two um, parent help sessions on Friday, August the 30th from 9.30 to 10.15 or on Tuesday, September the 3rd from 4 to 4.30 in the Media Center. And those um, help sessions for, are for parents who have additional questions about how to register for our electives. During this screencast, I'm going to go over how to correctly fill out the registration guide, answer some frequently asked questions, and um, go over how to read the identification label on the front of your child's um, elective choice form. So all of the important information can be found on the first page. You will be able to find our course description guide by either going to our Washington website here um, that is posted, um, or if you have a smartphone or a device, you can scan this QR code here and it will take you directly to that course description guide. If you're going to our website, if you will go to um, Washington, um, the Washington Elementary School website, then you're going to click on Our School, the second yellow tab. You'll scroll down to Magnet Information. And once on this page, you'll click on the course, elective course descriptions for 2019-20. You'll scroll down. You can either, um, if you're on a desktop you can or a laptop, you can pop this out by clicking here, which will make it larger or you can just scroll through the elective um, description guide here. Based on feedback from parents um, for our elective information um, survey that we did at the end of last year, we got some feedback about the course description guide and we tried to make it a little easier for you to read this time by breaking things down into first quarter and second quarter. So as you see, um, when you go through the course description guide, you will find the first quarter core academic electives listed first, um, starting with language arts. Um, and then you'll go to social studies, math, science, and then you'll have all of the other um, electives listed there. Um, after the name of each elective, you'll see um, what grade levels that uh, elective is offered for and for which period. So for example, this elective author author is offered um, to second and third graders and it can be found in sixth period first quarter. Hopefully this will allow you to find things a little easier in the course description guide because we know it is um, a very large document. So when you are looking at your um, child's choice form, um, there are a few um, do's and don'ts of elective registration. Um, first, we ask that you rank your elective choices in order of preference, um, one through four, um, and you do not put check marks. Um, it really helps us, especially when electives are full, if you will put those number choices one through four. In addition, we want students to take a balanced schedule with both core and other electives. Um, all first through fifth grade students have two other electives that they need to take over the course of the year. Um, our kindergarten and second grade students need to take at least one language arts or social studies elective and then our third through fifth grade students need to take one language arts or social studies and one math or science. Um, again those requirements are um, highlighted right here in this um, do box for elective registration if you need to go back and take a look at that. When you're filling out the elective um, choice form 
you're looking at an entire period. So for this third grade um, student filling out this form, they're going to number one through four in this entire box that I'm highlighting. And like we said, we wanted to have a combination of both core subjects and other subjects. So if this was my child, I might put a one for kitchen chemistry. I might put a two for music and movement. I might put a three for yoga. And then I might put a four for author, author. That gives the person who's scheduling um, the ability to have both core subjects and other subjects to choose from. Um, and it's going to ensure that your child has a well-balanced schedule. Then I'm going to do the same thing down in seventh period, and I'm going to number one through four in this entire box. And then I will repeat that again for second quarter, both sixth period and seventh period. The second part that I want to talk about today is how to check your child's label, which will be located up here in the top box. I have three examples of what um, an elective label could look like. It will have your teacher's name, um, your grade level, and your child's name. So this is Will Wizard. And I can tell based on his choice form whether or not he has been recommended or identified as AIG and can take those AIG recommended electives. In this case, Will has been identified in both subject areas, so he can take and is required to take at least one AIG elective in both a in either a math or a science and either a language arts or a social studies over the course of the year. I can also see here that if I look at the orchestra, there is a period set next to it. So Will is going to be taking orchestra sixth period. So when I take a look at that choice form and I'm looking at sixth period, I'm going to know that I don't need to take choose any electives during this block because Will is going to be in orchestra this period. In addition, I'm going to make sure that I'm at least choosing an option of an AIG elective down here in seventh period because he's required to take one in each area of identification. Let's take a look at another label example. This is Wanda Wizard, and Wanda is in the first grade. She does not have any formal AIG identification, so that's left blank. But under the gifted challenge recommended, she has an MA, and that MA stands for math. So she can choose math or, lang math or science electives that are labeled AIG. In addition, there is no period next to any of these additional electives down here, so she can choose anything that she would like to choose. A third example could be Wilson Wizard. Wilson Wizard has been recommended and has a bookworms elective seventh period. So again, on that choice form, I'm going to I'm not going to choose elective seventh period because that is labeled here. If your child does not have an identification, is not recommended for AIG electives, and has not um, pre-registered or been selected for any of the other electives, they're free to make choices um, with whatever they would like to take. I hope that this um, screencast helps answer your questions about how to fill out the elective registration form. If you um, have additional questions, you can feel free to give me a call or email me. My information is down here at the bottom of the page. Um, Student schedules will be sent home the week of September the 9th, and our first quarter electives for first through fifth grade will begin Monday, September the 16th. And on this day, information will be sent home to our kindergarten students about registering for electives. 
Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day.